So we're here at uh, uh, the uh, state-of-the-art plant of Cisco Victoria with uh, uh, Che Wei. Che Wei is, uh, is the producer specialist and uh, production manager of the, the produce department here at Cisco. And he's going to give us a few hints about uh, the proper handling and storing of uh, uh, salad greens and a few vegetables as well. Right, Che? That is right. So what I'll do sure. is I'll take you guys for a walk through and show you from start to finish on how we bring raw material in, process it, make a finished product and return it to the bin location. All right, let's go on with it. So here we are today producing our salad mix, Tuscan mix. And what it is is a combination of romaine, green leaf and radicchio. So we'll start off here, we bring the raw material in. They'll dump the raw material on here. We don't allow any cases on there to avoid any kind of staples or cross contamination. The raw material gets chopped here. We have, and then we have a double wash system. Is there anything added to the, uh, to the washing waters in the uh, waters? We do treat the product. Uh, the biggest misconception is that we fill it full of chemicals in order to prolong shelf life, and that's just not the case. Uh, the first bath that we do is basically a chlorination bath, and it just kills off any bacteria, anything that may be growing or living on your lettuces. Uh, then we bring it over into a second bath, which is just a simple vitamin C solution, the same stuff in your orange juice. And what that does is seal up the edges of your lettuce to avoid any oxidization. Once it comes through this process here, we'll take it out and we'll put it into all these buckets that have holes on it. Everything stays on a caster, nothing's allowed to touch the floor. We do want to make sure we maintain uh, good food safety. Here's where we'll dump all the raw material after it's all been washed, cleaned and chopped. If it's just a single material, we'll bag it, we'll weigh it, we'll label it, and then it goes on. So once he's done uh, weighing it up and topping up to the bag to the appropriate weight, he'll take it and he'll bring it over to the sealer. That's where he seals it. From that point, that's where it gets labeled, and then it goes on to the pallet. We have a rotation that comes in one way, goes around in one process, and straight out back the other door. Uh, we maintain the room at 38 degrees. Our coolers outside actually range anywhere from 34 to 38. Uh, but by maintaining the temperature in here, you don't have a hot and a cold fluctuation of the product going outside, coming back into a refrigerated state. Um, worse so than a hot or a cold is a hot and cold mixture. That's when your product will start to sweat inside the bags, you'll have condensation build up, and that's when you get your decay. Food safety is, is uh, obviously a great concern to everyone of us in the, in the food service industry. Yeah. What are some of the things that, uh, that you guys are doing in terms of ensuring that the product is safe? We will only use what they call a gap grower. So it's information, a gap is a good agricultural practices. And some of the practices we need them to follow in order to pack into a Cisco box uh, would be stuff like not using sewer lines, making sure their water is treated, there's right. no pesticides being sprayed, uh, no dangerous pesticides being sprayed anywhere around. Uh, there is a big long list of guidelines that they have to follow. Traceability being one of the big ones. As you can see, we're in the middle of February. The boxes have come in from Yuma. It's covered in rain down there and mud yet all our boxes are white. One standard is no box is allowed to touch the ground. The old ways of the farmers walking along, dropping bundles as they go, and as the pickers are coming through and harvesting, folding up the boxes. Now what they have is these big machines that basically come through on tractors, the boxes are up on those, the product gets harvested and filled up there to avoid any kind of contamination of the box hitting the ground. The old days of the staples are gone, as you can see, it's all fold up boxes now. Um, and then this is the key to all of it. Every single box that we bring in has traceability. Now looking at that code doesn't make a lot of sense, but what is in there is basically the harvest date, uh, the crew that harvested, the field it came out of, um, and what time of day and what day it was that it was actually harvested on. So with that code, if there is a recall or any kind of uh, issues in question, we phone down to our supplier, we give them that code, and we can trace everything right from the field out to a raw material like this going out to a customer or all these lot numbers are recorded on anything that comes into my produce facility. Um, so even if we're processing a chop romaine and there's a recall on romaine, even that, that product can be recalled as well because all of these numbers are all documented and everything is traceable. So on your end, down on the field end, we can find it all. Uh, any word of advice uh, in terms of uh, uh, what to do with those uh, lettuces and vegetables when they come in in the, in the kitchen? Even though it's being sent to you as a ready-to-use product, it's always a good idea to wash any of your vegetables, regardless if it's coming to you in raw material or as a value-added product. Um, just giving it that extra rinse and giving that error, erring on the side of caution is always to better safe. Right, yeah, good. Now, um, what about uh, in, in terms of storage? Once, once the bag is open and it's not used in, in one service, what is the best way to store all these uh, 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 pre-washed lettuces? 
Anytime you're dealing with a value added product, it doesn't matter if you're starting with a tomato product or romaine product, um, regardless of how you would store the raw material, anything that's been cut multiple times, you definitely want to store it in the coldest part of your cooler, leave the bag closed as much as possible, keep it covered. Um, those are the kind of indications that will actually give you a longer shelf life on those products. Right. Now, earlier you mentioned about the, the, the pillow pack, uh, which uh, Cisco does. So what is the difference between the pillow pack and the, and the vacuum pack? We will actually purposely leave 2% oxygen in. You know, for shipping purposes, obviously, you can't ship like stuff like that from the States. Uh, your freight would be enormous. We can get away with it locally here. We actually will pump in our own gas mixture, which contains 2% oxygen. And the reason we do that on a vacuum seal product, you suck all the oxygen out, and it's meant for travel. It's meant to last two weeks, and you can send it all over the world. When we do a pillow pack, we're only going to be locally. We don't need our lettuces to last two weeks, but we need a customer to have it for a good five to seven days without having it brown. Yeah. So when we pump our oxygen in, what it actually does, when you open the bag and the oxygen goes in, it's not a big shock to the system. Your product will last in an open bag for five, six days. On a vacuum seal product, what will end up happening is the oxygen goes in, it changes the atmosphere, it puts the lettuce into shock, and your oxidization will actually begin a lot sooner. Well, interesting chemistry facts. Uh, thanks a lot, Che. No problem, thank you.